Hi friends, welcome back. Hope you've had a good week. And if you're new, hello, my name is Tracy and welcome to my home here in Sussex, England. This week, we're going to be decorating the guest cottage. Now, I've decided I'm gonna add a little bit of color. My home is normally very neutral, but I think for the summer, I'm gonna add a little bit of blue and white to the neutral scheme in there. So I've been out doing a little bit of thrifting, a little bit of shopping, and I want to show you what I've bought. So my first find were these brass candlesticks, two pounds each. Can't go wrong with a brass candlestick, can you? They go absolutely everywhere. So I'm going with a blue and white scheme. I found this little vintage jug for 10 pounds. So I'm gonna give that a good wash and I think that will definitely find its way in there. This was 15 pounds, Royal Dalton. Absolutely huge, beautiful, big old uh, bowl here. So lots of uses for that. After a little bit of charity shop shopping, I went over to the auction house and I've just had an email to say, I've got four out of the five lots that I left commission bids on. So we're going to head over there after I've sorted these out and find what we've got and see if we can use anything in the styling for the guest cottage. After I left the auctions, I wasn't done. I, I got my second wind and I went down to HomeSense. And in HomeSense, I found gorgeous wooden pestle and mortar for just five pounds. Quite why they were letting it go for five pounds, I don't know, but that's definitely going in there. As we're on a blue and white theme, a couple of little tea towels. Can't go wrong with those, can you? And a couple of trays. Why have one when you can have two? Love to use trays, love to use them to corral small ornaments together, so they will definitely be used. And then I found a rug. So I love, love the rusticness of this, and it's gonna be great underneath the sofa coffee table area in there. I've also got another room in the main house that it would really suit, so might have to go back and buy another one. Don't tell hubby. And I found a couple of really tough coir mats for a couple of the doors, the entrances. So happy with those. I've been rounding up all my old blue and white china pots, Albje Dar, that I've been collecting over the years. In fact, I don't think I've had blue on display since the 1990s. Let's pop over to the auctions now and see what I've got. This is collection day and my car has been loaded up. This is actually just two lots in the boot here. I paid just £22 for one lot and £25 for the other. The brass scales were 38 and I just thought they were so cute, I couldn't resist them. And then I saw the tray, not so much the Carlton ware, although that green and pink would actually work really well on the main house veranda. But it's the tray I was particularly interested in and the crockery I'll probably sell on. The drawer unit is very good quality. And how cute is this sewing machine with its oak cover? I remember as a child first learning to sew on one of these, but I was never very good. There was a frame in there and also a trunk. I'll be able to do something with that. Do tell me how you would finish it though. Give me some ideas. This carved stand will be useful. And how cute is this little chair? Obviously it's in need of some TLC, but I just think it's so sweet. There was a badly painted towel stand included and also this side table I assume it is that I quite fancy using as a stool. It was actually this drawer that caught my eye on this particular lot and I'm thinking of using it this way on the upright. So lots of projects to come, let's get on with the decorating of the cottage. When I'm redecorating, I always like to take everything out of a room. It enables me to give it a really good clean and then start with the blank canvas. The corbels here are not just for decoration, they're also to help strengthen the shelves as I do like to put a lot of weight onto them. I put sockets above each of the shelves in order to put fairy lights on there, but when I'm not using them, I really don't want to see the sockets. So I tend to layer up in front of them just to hide them. 
All the mirrors that you'll see in today's video are charity shop finds, auction finds, and they've all been finished with Annie Sloan Old White and then Distressed Back. And if you'd like some ideas on mirror finishing, I have got a video, Five Mirrors, Five Ways, so take a look at that one. I love decorating with vintage books, especially since I got a huge job lot from the auctions for about £20, and they just keep on giving. So I like to use them with the covers on, the covers off, and group the colours together, tie them with string, tie them with ribbon. There's lots of different ways of using them. Another great decorating staple favourite of mine is earthenware. I love hunting the charity shops, the auction houses, trying to find pieces at the right price. Flooring and the countertops are made from old French cheese boards and we were so careful when we were laying them to minimise the amount of wastage. So I've only got a few little pieces left over but I'm using those as chopping boards and as boards on countertops in order to group smaller items together. Now this pot has a bit of a leaky bottom, not a good look, so I'm using a vase inside it in order to put the water in there and there's no nipping out to the supermarket or the garden centre I'm just shopping the field and shopping the garden. I'm really pleased with this little 9.99 tray and the £10 jug looks gorgeous filled with daisies. Yay, the scales have made it into the decorating, into the cottage. So aside from a quick wipe down, I've done absolutely nothing to them. I don't know whether or not I should lighten that base, the dark wood. Maybe you'll let me know. I'm adding a lamp that I revamped by spraying it white and distressing it. And I always wrap flexes with coir. I have a lamp revamp video if you're interested in that. So to finish this part of the kitchen, it's a bit more cheese board, a couple of pots of rosemary and a candle. The vintage shelving here was found at auction, in fact I didn't even know what it was, it was all stacked up in a corner and I had to ask one of the porters to tell me what it was. The boards, the shelves were painted solid white so all I've done is run a sander over them and you know gradually taken them back, left some of the paint on to give that lovely distressed finish. 
and they're the perfect spot for the big Royal Dalton bowl. I can't believe I only paid £15 for that. The large bowls next to it are from a set of three that I picked up at HomeSense quite some years ago though. And a quick tip, if any of your crockery is too shiny, spray it with matte varnish. And if your baskets are too orange, cover them in white wax. I created this stone effect using wall filler and soil and yes there is a video on that so please do have a look if you fancy aging some pots. I've also used wall filler mixed with paint on the mirror and on the oak console table. Nothing is safe when I have a bag of wall filler. Time to move into the living area of the cottage. The picture window gives great views of the garden and lets in lots of light. So the rug that I picked up is going to go down here. Now I didn't want anything too big, too domineering because I just love the cheese boards. So I don't want to hide them. The coffee table is an old school desk that I just cut the legs down and did a paint job on. And the sofa came from a charity shop, £75, but I think it's not going to stay because the back is too high. If you saw my video last week, you'll recognise this chair and know it has not been sat in yet. It needs more time to cure. And if you've not seen the video, go check it out. The second tray that I found from HomeSense fits this spot perfectly and is ideal for taking these smaller items. The glass jars that I'm using for the daisies are actually old diffuser bottles. As this is an old school desk, it's actually ideal for storing magazines. And my house is featured in that one. The dish here is made of glass that I've done a paint effect on. This unit here is actually made from MDF and it was found at the auctions for just £20. It needed a new paint job on it, but it was at a stage when we were just about to make something like this and quite frankly I couldn't have bought the materials at the price that I paid for this, let alone paid a carpenter. It really never ceases to amaze me the things that turn up at auction, that turn up in charity stores. So reusing is good for your pocket and it's good for the planet.
Now, my American friends may well recognise this garland. It's from Hobby Lobby. I was watching Mama from Scratch and she was using one and I tried to follow the link through. But when you're in the UK, you can't shop at Hobby Lobby. But as luck would have it, my son was actually in Chicago. And so I messaged him and he very kindly, being a really good boy, loves his mama, FaceTimed me from Hobby Lobby and brought four of them back to the UK in his golf bag. Just going to pop the coir mat here by the door before we go into the bedroom. The King Size Brass Bed is another charity shop find, £75. I posted it on my stories on Instagram and somebody messaged me to say that they would bought exactly the same bed for nearly £2,000. So I'd say one of my top buys. I've got a set of five of these miniature books and they are 120 years old and they contain Shakespeare plays. The cups and saucers were bought in Thailand. Dried flowers from my children for Mother's Day are going into an earthenware jug on a dresser that I revamped from a charity shop. Simple chair, wardrobe and basket complete this end of the bedroom. And the blue-grey undercolour on the chair suits the colour scheme really well, as does the white wax on the wardrobe. I'm just going to pop a few finishing touches in the bathroom. When I bought the wardrobe, a dresser came with it, so I got them both for £80. However, the dresser has been butchered a little bit in order to get the plumbing in. I'm using a big wooden heart that was an old TK Maxx find and a few more of the blue and white pieces and a few clippings from the garden. Most of the blue and white pottery that I've used throughout this is by Spode. And here's the other tea towel. Just one last item to put out, and that is the other coir mat. If you've got this far, then thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I post almost every week, so please do like, subscribe, hit the bell, share with your friends, join me next week. Take care. See you then.